Holy smokes, the stock market feels like it just collapsed with Apple falling over 4.8%, giving up its $3 trillion royal crown, gone. Some say it's anger, some say it's profit taking, some say it's just a regular retracement, bro, it's totally normal. After all, if we take a peek at, uh, well, the retracement lines, it's almost perfect. Look at that retracement on Apple, right back down to where it belongs, that support line. It's almost perfect, you can't make it up. What if we look at the NASDAQ? Nearly perfect as well, right back down to those retracement lines. Check out Tesla, same thing. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 via the SPY, same thing. It looks like we've just gone through a Fibonacci retracement. Retracement, or have we? Is there potentially something worse beneath the scenes going on? Well, some have analyzed tick charts, which are a fancy way, actually they're not really fancy at all, they're pretty simple. You just basically take net buys minus net sells, like the number of orders for these, and the tick charts are coming in super low. Now, to us, that's like, who cares about the tick chart? Well, the implication of this, the bottom line of this, is that when you have the tick chart coming in super low, you generally suspect that it's algorithmic selling driving the market lower. And these two things could actually align, that algorithms incorporating retracement lines are pushing us right back to those lines. So the tick charts imply it, the technical analysis implies this is a retracement, but there's still fear, and there could be legitimate fear. Let's talk about that legitimate fear, and is this stock market mini crash this week, just the start of a bigger crash? Has the real crash just begun? Or is this part of what we've been saying since about the end of last year? Expect some kind of volatile Nike swoosh recovery, and this is the volatility. After all, volatility has finally come off its insane floor, which is leading others to say, it's just volatility, bro. Okay, fine. So we've got some of the bro ideas out of the way. Let's now dive a little deeper into what some of the facts are of what's going on. The biggest thing that we've had this week has really been twofold. One, we had the Fitch downgrade, which led to massive bond selling. The massive bond selling, some say was also algorithmic, but it led to higher yields. Higher yields compared or combined with Fib retracements, great reasons for algorithms to sell. Bears say, Look, man, the payrolls report that we just got, it's all lagging. Get prepared for a massive collapse. In fact, I haven't seen this many negative comments on a payrolls report in years. People are very suspicious of the government data. They're pissed off because the market's red, and they're pissed because, quite frankly, the government has revised down payrolls data every time they've released it in at least the last six months. Now, bulls respond to this and say, fine, it may be true that payrolls data is always revised down even more than the reports that we get, but there was some good news in the reports and we have to consider trend. So what could possibly have been good news? Well, take a look at this. This is a slowdown in the part of the economy that Powell cares most about, which is private services. In other words, are we finally seeing that slowdown in something that has been driving the bulk of core inflation, service inflation? You already know this. You already know that the three things that have led to uh, inflation have been goods inflation, housing inflation, and then services x housing. We already have disinflation in goods. That means prices are going up at a slower rate. We are seeing housing rents grow at a slower rate as well. Now, that doesn't mean they're going down, although they probably should because they've gotten ridiculous. Uh, and then over here, we are waiting for this to occur. Services x housing. That would be really your labor and hospitality, your retail, so on and so forth. And we are seeing that wage growth decline substantially. This is leading a lot of bulls to say, look, this is good. The part that was hot for Powell is softening. That's great. But the bears are saying, bro, J Pow just jacked up rates again. This is a lagging chart. It is about to collapse. 
And this is where the Bears actually have a potentially reasonable argument. Payroll gains tend to go negative very rapidly into a recession. Now, anecdotally, according to the Wall Street Journal and the Beige Book, we see companies that are still hoarding labor and in fact are still fighting for labor and don't want to retrain new workers instead, are taking cash that they have and are spending it to what? Invest in their companies and basically invest through this recession. But as soon as fear strikes the labor market, that is companies' willingness to hire, job gains can erode rapidly. And this is where the bears have a point. Take a look at 2000. In the year 2000, we actually had continuing trend right here, continuing trends for labor gains. It wasn't really until the end of 2000 that all of a sudden job gains plummeted and they plummeted rapidly. This, by the way, uh, in yellow, let's go ahead and draw a yellow line here. The yellow line I'm about to show you is the negative line. So anything under yellow is negative. Look how rapidly we collapsed into that in 2000. Then we also rapidly collapsed at the beginning of 2008. You can see this uh, tick right here, this top is about November of 2011. And all of 2008, you had this extremely rapid decline. A lot of bears are saying, look, the stats we're looking at suggest we have a 100% chance of a recession in the next 12 months. And that means we're probably going to see this big plummet Maybe it wasn't in 2023, maybe it all took a little longer to come around, but it's coming and 2024 is right around the corner, so buckle up, we're about to go to hell. That's at least the argument bears are making. Bulls on the other hand counter and say, but look, the trend, this trend by the way from the beginning of 2021 to now, has been relatively reasonable. In fact, if we jump over to the historic norm of job gains, the historic average job gains is this white line right here. It puts you at about 176,000 jobs created per month. That's roughly the historic average, flattening out the highs and the lows. Well, where are we sitting right now? Well, right now, the low level where we are is about 172, which as you can see, we haven't actually gone really, with the exception of right here, we haven't really gone below trend yet. But then again, the bears respond and say, but bro, when we do, it happens fast. We could get a rapid deterioration. And this is where others say, well, not necessarily. <laughs> See where this is going? It's a constant back and forth. Not necessarily. Because bro, look at the below trend jobs growth of the era of 2015 to 2019, where markets were still essentially in a relatively bullish tone. The average, if we just look at 2015 to 2019, is probably actually closer to here, which puts you closer to about 120,000 jobs gained per month. So, short of seeing this rapid decline in jobs, so far it looks like payrolls are moving as normal. However, and this is the danger, payroll jobs, payroll gains tend to collapse rapidly, not briefly. And this is where it's nice to look at the Federal Reserve. Well, Fed, are you finally relaxing or are you just going to keep hiking? Well, a lot is going to depend on what happens with the next CPI report. We did get some commentary from uh, Bostic today and uh, another member of the Federal Reserve. We got uh, two commentaries. We got Bostic and Goolsby it was, but Goolsby is a dove. Bostic's a little more neutral. But both of them suggested that the labor market was coming into better balance more quickly now than expected. A lot of people looked at this and said, okay, this is the Fed basically forecasting that we're probably going to pause in September. Doesn't mean rates can't go up again in the future, but yesterday we were looking at somewhere around a 16% chance of uh, a hike in September. Now we're only looking at about a 13% chance and expectations are that this number is going to fall even more, that we're probably gearing up for a pause in September. That would be at least somewhat good. Bears say it's a little too late. We're still going to have a massive earnings collapse over the next year, and you're not going to want to be in stocks, although others say they're just looking for a lower opportunity to buy stocks. But what's a real catalyst that we have coming up? Oh, and by the way, the Fed terminal funds rate actually just fell as well. 
uh, at least according to the market's estimates, now in line with a pause. It just dropped over the last few hours uh, from a few little ticks towards a hike direction to in line with a pause, now sitting at 5.367 for those caring about the numbers. Well, the next big catalyst, of course, is CPI data. And it could also be some negative news coming for CPI data. This is also leading to heart palpitations and potentially algorithmic selling. What do we have? We have CPI month-over-month -month estimates to be 0.2%. That's great. CPI month-over-month -month core, 0.2%. Great. Those would be roughly in line with what we're looking for. However, that headline year-over-year -year CPI, thanks to base effects and an increase in oil prices to some extent, more base effects though because our month-over-month -month isn't changing that much, we're looking for a 3.3 read on the headline inflation uh, level. The last read was 3%. So now we're going in the wrong direction. And all it would take is confirming that wrong direction with a miss on some of these core numbers. And you'll probably set up for a really ugly August. That CPI report, by the way, comes out August 10th. So mark your calendar for August 10th. The day after that, we expect to get PPI reads. And PPI final demand is expected to move up from 0.1% to 0.7%. So still relatively close to zero, especially for a year-over-year -year number, but a little bit more pressure on some of these numbers than we had in the last reports. So the last reports could have been some nice, soft reports, these a little rougher. So all of this combined with the fact that, hey, some things in earnings weren't perfect for everyone, has given us really what I call a give back. Look, for example, at the give back of PayPal. If you jump into the charts here, you can see PayPal basically gave up all of its recent gains after its last earnings report. Not great. I actually bought a little bit of PayPal right around 63 bucks. It went all the way to $77, $76 there at one point. And look at that, right back to $63. Oopsie daisy, I suppose. Now, what else do you have? Well, you've got, again, these retracements dragging down industries, higher interest rates, dragging down industries. What do we really need to confirm the official bull market is back? Well, what we truly need is the Federal Reserve to truly U-turn. Now, bears argue the Fed will only do that once something breaks. Bulls argue, well, the Fed will U-turn officially and start cutting rates when inflation confirms that it's down. But Folks on the bear side say by that time, it's going to be way too late, and the crash will already be here. So, what's your take on this? Do you align more with the bears or with the bulls? Obviously, a red week makes it much easier to align with the bears, because the movement of the stock charts really messes with people's psychology. People get sad when stocks are red and they're in stocks, and they get happy when they're out of stocks and stocks are red. <laughs> so... You kind of have this weird psychology at play that generally when the stock market is red, either reiterates how the bears feels, feel or makes the bulls feel sad. So it's pretty common to have negative sentiment compound into more negative sentiment. That's how you also get euphoria in the other direction. Anywho, thanks so much for watching. Check out the programs on Building Your Wealth link down below. Make sure to go to househack.com to learn more about my real estate startup coming out once we release the full slide deck and everything for non-accredited investors. Stay tuned, thanks so much, goodbye. Now, I want you to know this, when it comes to AI, time is what's going to make you money. And if you can prove that value to an employer, you'll always be able to be employed. So this is another way of making sure that you don't get replaced.